Hey guys, you're watching Undiscovered Creatives, where we unravel raw talent and hidden artists in Sarawa. Now, on the show, we have been featuring artists and their art. And today, we are going to be featuring a videographer, an art form that has been revolutionized throughout the times. My guest joining me today is Sydney Atten. Sydney, thank you for coming by the show. I appreciate you taking the time off your busy schedule to come by. So, how are you? I'm good. Thank you All for right. having me. That's great. Um, okay, so uh, how did you start? as a videographer from the the beginning until the videographer that you are now? Well, I would describe it as a happy accident because before I did any videos seriously, like taking videos seriously, like putting all my effort into videography, I was just doing videos for fun because I had another passion. I was a magician back then, so I needed to share my magic to other people on social media and all that. So I need to shoot a video. So after producing so many videos, I never realized that actually the process of producing those videos is what I like, not the <laughs> magic itself. I do love magic. Now that uh, I think, think about it, I realized that I actually love more producing the videos itself. So starting from 2017, I realized that and I made a conscious effort to really uh, expand my videography skills. So the rest is history after that. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, you were a magician before, trying to document your magic tricks. Yes. And uh, accidentally, you just enjoyed the process of making videos, and thus, here you are, the videographer you are today. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> basically, uh, magic tricks and creating content, they're within the same context, right? You know, trying to produce uh, content for the people, right? So I've seen your music videos, your vlogs, and your portraitures. You know, I really enjoy them. But can you share with me which of, you know, between this three that you uh, enjoy the most? Hmm, it's a bit hard. Uh, but if I have to choose, I would say that I would love music video the most because it combines two of my biggest passion into one video, which is because I'm formally trained as a music teacher. I'm a full-time music teacher. So... It combines my love for music, growing up with a music uh, teacher father. My father is a music teacher too, so I'm a music teacher too. So it combines my love for music with my new passion in videography. So to combine those two into one video is, for me, is very satisfying. So uh, what are the challenges that you face when you're uh, trying to create a music video? With music videos, um, it's always trying to avoid the cliches. Like, okay, we're gonna delve into the- All right, no problem, <laughs> more, please. More sensitive parts. Because uh, I feel like uh, songs, they are usually, uh, songs that are given to me anyway. Uh, I don't know about others' experience, but for me, it's always the problem of, uh, the songs always have the same stories. It's either some kind of love story, where the, there, there is a, some kind of breakup, or there's some kind of, like the world is so bright, so colorful for them kind of story. So it's usually songs are in that kind of storyline. Yeah. So it's difficult to find a new way to tell the same story. Like if you try uh, something new that is way too different, then it, the, the audience might not be able to accept it. If you are trying something so usual, it doesn't, it's not as satisfying when, when you've made it. It feels like you're cheating, you're just getting a template and then just putting just a bit of spices here and there and just make, call it your own. I do not like doing that. I always try to find other things, other ways to achieve the same goal, same objective. Right, because um, uh, I think my favorite music video that was uh, produced by you uh, was the song called Gawai Gawai Every Day. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Up till today, um, you know, even with uh, Timo uh, Lawa song, I still yeah. prefer the the uh, Gawai Gawai every day because you know it's not the normal type of music video that you see in Malaysia, yeah. right? You know, be it uh, a Malay type music, a Ibanese uh, type music, um, Gawai Gawai every day is it's just really different. It's really unique, and plus with the colors that you're playing, you know, within the video, it's really yeah. uh, drawing my eyes towards the artist that that's you know rapping mm -hmm. the song. So, uh, anyways. Uh, how is the post-editing process? Because, uh, you know, uh, for photography, there's uh, mm -hmm. the color grading and everything. Mm -hmm. And what about video? Because 
based on my knowledge, uh, videos mm -hmm. every second within a video counts mm -hmm. when you're doing post editing. Can you share a little bit on that? Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to note that the amazing colors in uh, Everyday Gawai music video is done by my director of photography, Sharizan Ramli. So, thank you. Shout out that. to Sharizan yeah. Ramli. <laughs> Shout out to him. Uh, amazing work by him. I just mostly just guide in terms of what, what kind of uh, feel that I feel and mood that I wanted. So, uh, in terms of post processing, uh, the editing part, well, any video goes to three process. It changes in three parts. Like when you plan it, it's something. When you shoot it, now you have to change it according to the place, according to what happens on set. So now it's a different story. When you edit it, now it's a totally different story because now you realize, oh, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit here, so I have to cut out this. But if I cut out this, it doesn't tell another story that I wanted to tell. So now I have to rearrange things. So for me, uh, if you plan it well from the beginning, it shouldn't be much of a problem. But if you don't plan it well, then it's going to be a long process for editing. Well, for me, editing, the first thing that I'll do is, of course, you have to check every footage, uh, take out which one you want, put in one folder, focus on that, create the story. Yeah, you have to yeah. be systematic. If not, you can't really create yes. a real storyline. <laughs> right. So um, uh, with the Gawa Gawa Everyday video clip, um, do you think that you managed to do it uh, in a, the most systematic way that you can, that you plan it out properly? Did the shoot go the way the way you expected it to? If I have to put it into percentage to oversimplify things, I guess it's about like 70, 75% of what I wanted, what I planned, what I imagined. Because during the shoot, we did have to make uh, quite a few changes and sacrifices to make sure that we can finish it on that day, on that night. So, yeah. So the whole video was shot uh, in a night? In one oh, night, Oh, that's yeah. amazing. I think it was from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. Wow, yeah. okay. So that's uh, roughly around 13 hours? Yes. All right, uh, all right, thank you so much, Sydney. Thank you so much. All right, guys, uh, we are going to be back after this short commercial break, so make sure you guys stay tuned uh, for Sydney Athens. See you guys in a bit. Welcome back, guys, to the second segment of the show, Undiscovered Creators, where we unravel raw talent and hidden artists in Sarawak. Joining me today, my guest is Sydney Atten. Sydney, um, what are the challenges that you faced as a videographer, you know, since 2017 that you started trying to get clients or trying to push out content? Mm -mm. Uh, for me, uh, if you're talking about from the public itself, probably uh, the biggest issue that anyone is talking about, whether it's videographers or photographers or anyone else providing service for, of this kind, uh, is always the pricing. Like, we are never really... It's, it's hard to really charge in, in a way that is uh, fair to ourselves, but also something that is uh, attractive to customers. So it's always this constant battle of uh, pricing. So that is one of the hardest challenges. Another thing is uh, trying to put out your own creative ideas. No matter how much you believe in the idea, sometimes uh, people are just simply not used to that kind of content. So even though you have like thousand, like for wedding videos especially. So I'm uh, wedding videos, I do wedding videos too. So I have certain ideas of videos that I wanted to do because I've done so many music uh, wedding videos that I want to do the same thing but in a different way. But they insist on that, that the, the way that I did it before. So they are the client, so you're just going to have to, okay, okay. Right. So in the end, you kind of, you feel like you don't, uh, you don't feel satisfied. Like this is, there is something unique that, that can be done, but cannot be done. Yeah so, yeah, so basically what you're trying to say is uh, you can't really explore your creativity. Yes. Right. Um, okay. Uh, basically, what you said previously is that, you know, the, the constant battle of trying to meet at the middle, mm -hmm. the right price. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever gotten into a situation where a, a, you know, a certain party or certain organizers, you know, approached you and because, you know, they know you're a newcomer, yeah. right? And instead of paying you, despite the fact that they know the skills that you have, mm -hmm. 
um, and they don't want to pay you with cash, but mm. instead they're offering you something called exposure. <laughs> Have you ever gotten into this situation before? Yes, many times. Especially in the early years, uh, 2017, 2018. Um, start, uh, when I started, uh, it really did piss me off. But nowadays, uh, I feel like if it wasn't because of exposure, I wouldn't have the, uh, the opportunity to uh, create more videos to attract other customers. So for me, nowadays, my thinking is like this. Okay, they may not be able to pay you money, but uh, being paid is not always with money. So if they can promise you creative freedom, for me, take it. If you're just starting out and you don't have enough in your portfolio, take it. Because now you, can, you have the chance to prove yourself. Because remember, as a videographer, as an artist, you are, your, your, your works are your business card. You are the product. Your music videos are not the product. Those are just uh, an example of what you can do. But the real product is you. So if you are able to have a large portfolio, a large uh, collection of videos, style, different style, different... So you have this uh, range that they need. So take it, take the chance. Yeah, so it. exposure. So for me, if you can have a deal with these people, the organizers, or the, these event organizers or any other parties that offer you exposure, okay, exposure, but creative freedom. Don't let them tell you, uh, not pay you, and then tell you what to do. That is the worst kind of deal. Avoid that. So if they want to offer you exposure and you really need to do this something, this idea that you want to do, take the chance to do it there. If they don't allow you to do that, then don't. That's it. For me. All right, so I, I really like your approach to this mm. because um, I think a lot of people would agree to me uh, because uh, they, they always say things like, you know, exposure is not going to pay the bills and everything. Mm. But again, uh, as a newcomer, mm -mm. Uh, you don't really have much choice because you, yeah. you still need, you know, videos to showcase mm -mm. your work, your skills and everything. Yeah. So now that you are a, um, an established uh, videographer, mm -mm. do you still get this kind of offers? Yes, still does. Uh, <laughs> I guess it has become quite a norm. I don't know every, anywhere else, but probably here. Yeah, I do still get that kind of uh, offers. I, and, and as I said, the first thing I ask, if they offer that kind of exposure, well, give me full creative freedom. You have no say in what I want to do. That's it. Wow. All right. So um, now that we have talked about you know, our creative freedom, mm -mm. let's talk about YouTube. All right. So, uh, like I said uh, previously, uh, I've I've seen most of your YouTube videos. Now, there are also videos that you've done, you know, ranting mm -hmm. or maybe <laughs> doing a review on music videos done by um, other mm -hmm. creators. What do you what uh what what do you have to say about that? Mm. Well, the music video reviews thing on my YouTube uh, it started just before MCO, so I wanted to push a little further what Iban music videos especially could do. So I feel like uh, it's kind of like the, any government system, like you need to have the uh, sitting party, the government, and then you need to have opposition. There, you can have check and balance. Creatives, just any video just out there without being critic, you just support it for the sake of, oh, sama iban. Support, no matter whatever it is, no matter how yeah, bad it is, that is not going to help the community, that is not going to help the industry. You need to have check and balance. That is why That is why I feel like, okay, I'm, I have a little bit of experience doing music videos, maybe I can uh, put something out there that might push this further into making producers or singers or any video makers out there uh, to think twice before actually executing ideas. I'm not saying that I'm the best videographer yeah, in the it, world. I'm not saying that. I'm just sharing. Uh, this is what I see. So if you want to reply, I don't mind. Because for my music video reviews, I never push it as something that is a joke. And I don't, I don't really joke in the music video. You don't, joke, I, yeah, no, you I don't just, joke, no, you bash them. Yeah. It's basically um, constructive comments. Yes. I try as much as possible and I keep it structured. 
I, I begin with uh, what I like about the music video, and then I went on with what could be improved. I'm not saying what's negative or what's bad. I'm saying what could be improved and how I would do it because they might do it that way because they like it that way. I might do it different because I like it this way. It doesn't mean I'm right, he's wrong. Yeah, it's it all doesn't a mean, of perspective. Yeah. Perspective, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then a conclusion, uh, just to a little bit, I guess it's oversimplifying. I just put it into grades. Uh, but again, it's one man's opinion. Uh, yeah. But I hope that one man's opinion it helps a little to push the limits of what Iban music videos yeah, can do. And you know what? I, I really feel like that's something that uh, us here in Malaysia, we should learn. Mm -hmm. That you know, just because you have different opinion doesn't mean you have to be enemies. Yes. <laughs> because I've seen a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, conversations on the internet. You know, yeah. when they have different opinions, they have to be like enemies. And they'll be like <laughs> bashing each other uh, back and forth, back and forth. And till there's no end. Yeah. Right? So um, do you receive any backlash though when you do these kind of videos? I mean, there's tons of comments. So I can't read through all the comments. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you've seen them through your notifications. Yes. Uh, I have seen uh, quite a few negative comments. Uh, comments that doesn't really help. Like, I, I, I'm okay with criticism. Like, if you don't agree with what I say in the music video, please uh, tell me. Maybe I, I don't see it from that perspective. So I want to learn too. I want to see how other people see it. Maybe I make a mistake on what I saw. So, um, but if you just saying derogatory things, saying negative things that doesn't help the conversation, uh, which is the point of the show itself, which is to expand the limits of what even music videos can do, then it's just... Yeah, I, just I ignore don't, them. Just I, ignore them. Yeah, ignore, There's no point in wasting your time. Yeah. Sometimes I ignore them, sometimes I do reply just out of fun because I do. Them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much, Sydney. Uh, all right, guys, so uh, that was it from Sydney. Uh, so we're going to be going for a short commercial break, and we will see you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks, to the show Undiscovered Creators, where we unravel raw talent and hidden artists in Sarawak. Joining me today is Sydney Yatin, the videographer. All right, Sydney, what do you think about the lack of equipment when doing videography? Should it be a challenge? Uh, I think it could both be an advantage and also a problem. Uh, sometimes it could expand your creativity, so now you have to push the boundaries of what you plan to make it work. So now you have to find other ways to make it work. Now with what you have. And sometimes it does make a huge problem because now you already have a cool idea that you wanted to do, but now you cannot really do that. So you have to settle with less sometimes. Yeah. All right. So uh, when you uh, mean uh, settle with less, uh, mm -hmm. does that mean still going with the plan that mm -hmm. you planned earlier? Or is it with uh, coming up with a new plan? All together. Yeah, um, it depends on the situation. Like, if you cannot find a solution that uh, saves the story uh, as much as possible of what you plan, then yeah, you're gonna have to change the story. And that is why pre production is important. Understand your story, understand your storytelling so that you know what can be changed, what cannot be changed. All right, thank you yeah. so much, Sydney. So, um, one last thing please uh, share any tips that you have or advices for uh, the newcomers who. Uh, are interested in doing videography? Mm -hmm. Okay, for newcomers, uh, I have two things that I want to uh, say. First is master the basics, and second, invest in storytelling skills. Okay, why master the basics? First, uh, when you want to learn more advanced techniques, you are always going to refer to the basic skills. So you don't want to learn the basic, uh, the advanced skill and then not knowing what's going on. So you, now you have to reverse and then keep on going. And the second one is storytelling. So why storytelling? Because it doesn't matter what your equipment is, it doesn't matter how expensive your camera, your lens is, but if you don't have a story to tell, it's not going to matter. Nobody is going to be really that interested in it. All right, okay. remember folks, storytelling is the basics when you're trying to carry out mm -hmm. a uh, visuals uh, film. Uh, so, for more tutorials, make sure you guys follow him on so his social media and also his YouTube channel, which is... Sydney Atin Films for both. <laughs> All right, so make sure you guys follow him on Instagram, subscribe to his YouTube channel for more tutorial videos. All right, Sydney, thank you so much for your time to come by the show. 
to share your stories, your experiences. Okay, I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors and also your future projects. Thank right? You. All right, guys, so we are going to be ending the episode with a music video produced by Sydney himself, performed and sang by Timo. So uh, this music video is about the celebration of women of all races, types, dark, fair, tall, or short. So enjoy. Stay safe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Semua